Alrighty, so I have my eight millimeter Shosha, which has cleared transfer. This was a registered DWAT, meaning that it was uh, registered and can be legally reactivated, but was disabled. And they had disabled it by plugging the barrel and the chamber, or plugging the chamber, welding up the bolt face, and then welding the barrel extension to the receiver tube. So I have fixed that by removing that weld, replacing the barrel and bolt assemblies with brand new ones. They are, by the way, a matching set of barrel and bolt, so they should headspace together just fine. And this is the first time out at the range to see if my reactivation has been successful. So these, of course, use that uh, well-known half circular magazine. I've got these loaded with 10 rounds just for now. There we go, locked in. I'm gonna set this to C, coupe par coupe, or coupe par coupe, which is uh, semi-auto, and uh, let's see if it works. <clears throat> wow, not only did that work, it completely killed my target. The target fell down and has not come back up. So, we'll just uh, shoot into the backstop some. Oh, that's not good. Oh, yeah, that's definitely not good. I should have looked at that. We have a LaBelle case in there backwards and another one trying to get into the chamber. All right, let's see. I need a patented pokey hand to poke that out of there. All right, let's try this again. I cleared that mouth. This is a better magazine, I think. So, uh, racked open. We're still on semi-auto. That one cleared. All right, and now let's go for a full DACA. All right, we have a bit of an ejection issue here. A couple more rounds in the mag. Whoop. Oops. And now it's empty. All right, let's try one more magazine. Locked in nicely. Bolts open. We are on full auto. Bipod set a little better. People mentioned that the bipod seemed awfully long on this gun, and I think the rationale for that is that these bipods, well, when you put them on a flat, solid range, yeah, they're a little bit tall, but when you get them in any sort of real terrain where you need to get the gun a bit higher to clear uh, terrain obstacles or where they sink into the ground, like these have, because this is kind of soft dirt, um, that, that bipod issue becomes less of an issue. I'm also able to note here that these bipod legs are totally asymmetrical, but they're still actually doing a pretty good job of holding the gun in place, and uh, I can pivot it and get a nice steady uh, squared up sight picture with it. All right, so clearly I have a little bit of work to do on the ejection of this thing, but uh, otherwise, I think the reactivation seems to have gone pretty darn well. Uh, these fired cases look pretty good. A little bit more work and we should be uh, up and running. So I took the performance you just saw, uh, it is now like a week or two later, and uh, talked to some folks who are knowledgeable on the show shot and they said, ah, that problem sounds like uh, you've got a bad extractor. And the extractor was 
uh, losing its grip on the cartridge a little too early in the cycle, which led to cartridges getting stuck in the ejection port. So, fortunately, I happen to had, have some spare parts for these, and I have a second extractor. I didn't notice anything actually wrong with the first one, but I swapped them out, and let's see uh, how it does with a different new extractor in it. a magazine feed issue. There we go. Remember, magazines, of course, were the primary complaint with this gun in World War I. So um, because I do have a bunch of mags for this, I am still going through and sorting the ones that are good from the ones that are maybe not quite so good. They are all at least 100 years old. Keep that in mind. Exact same feed issue there. Let's see if I can see it. Aha. No? That looks correct. Exact same feed issue. So we're going to set this magazine aside as not usable. Try a different one, you'll notice none of those extraction issues that we had last time. Well, that's a good magazine. If I'm going to use this thing in a two gun match, and I am, I want to know that I've got magazines that aren't going to let me down. I can imagine uh, French soldiers, and American soldiers for that matter, who were issued this guy, doing this exact same sort of thing if they had the opportunity before they knew they were going up in an attack. The last thing, you know, <laughs> it's one thing to have a mag go bad on you at a match. It's a lot worse to have it go bad on you when you're in an actual shooting war. That one is definitely good to go as well. We got one more magazine in here. Whoa, what, what do we have there? Magazine's in, solidly. That one looks like it's good to go too. All right, well, gun smoking from, wasn't quite 60, that was about 50 rounds mag dumped. I think that's, uh, that pretty well conclusively proves that our extractor swap has fixed the reliability issue. Woohoo! burning off oil, awesome. Three good mags, one that's called out, and uh, I'm looking forward to using this thing in a match.